hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're setting up a bandsaw. Well, it's amazing to me that there are so many people out there that own bandsaws but don't know how to set them up. And I receive so many emails with people complaining about how poorly their bandsaw cuts. And most recently, I received an email uh, from a viewer who said that they absolutely hated their Rikon bandsaw because of blade drift. And you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you right here and now that most of blade drift most of it can be compensated or can be corrected through proper bandsaw setup. Um, it's not the saw. You have to remember, it's blade drift. It's not saw drift. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to run through the steps of how to set up your saw. Now, I don't mean setting up your blade on your tires or wheels. We've done that here on the show. I'm talking about specifically your guide and your thrust bearings to get your blade working at its optimum. Now, some of you have bearings and some of you have guide blocks, and I'm gonna to try to cover both of them. So let's look at the bandsaw so that we can get some terminology so we're all on the same page. Well, we're gonna start off with a few of the terms that you may need to know with your bandsaw. For starters, we have the guide post. The guide post is this bar at the back here, which holds the next piece, which is your guide assembly. This section here that holds either your guide blocks or your guide bearings, this is your guide assembly. Now, whether or not your uh, entire unit is one piece with the blade guard, like what mine is, or whether they are separate pieces, they will all have some kind of height adjustment. Now for this one here, I have the Rikon 10-326 14-inch bandsaw. The height adjustment is here on the side of the saw and the locking knob is here on the back. Some are um, cranks like what mine is here and others are manual adjustments where it's strictly a post that goes up and down and is tightened by thumb screws. But either way, those are the parts of the uh, whole guide assembly. Now guys, we have several types of bearings here, actually two types of bearings. And I'll just open up my blade guard here and show you those bearings. Well, here at the bottom of the guide post, we have our two bearings here, our left and our right. These are your guide bearings. Um, they are the ones that come in on either side of your blade to keep your blade square and to kind of assist it and help it from twisting. On the back, right in behind here, is your thrust bearing. This bearing, guys, pushes up against the back end of your blade in behind this section here to keep you from pushing the blade beyond its limits and either bottoming it out against the back of your blade guard or pushing it off your wheels. So the thrust bearing keeps its position front to back. Your guide bearings keeps its position left to right. And these are the ones right here that are going to assist you with trying to correct your blade drift. Now these bearings are also on the lower half of the saw. So a set above the table and a set below. Here are your guide bearings and your thrust bearing is back here. Guys, regardless of whether or not they're on the top side of the table or below the table, the terminology for the bearings is identical thrust and guide and their operation or their function is exactly the same. Not to mention as well that their setup is exactly the same. So I'll be setting up and showing you how to set up the top set of bearings, but just keep in mind that the setup is identical for the bottom. It's just a little more difficult to film down here. So we'll do everything up top. The bearings on my saw are all spring loaded. They bounce back on the tension of the springs and once you get them to where you want them, you tighten them and hold them in place with these 
locking knobs here. The thrust bearings are exactly the same and they hold wherever you set them. You want to release them, you just release the knobs and they spring away from the blade. Guys, there are many different types of bearings. Some are manual adjustment where you slide them in and out and tighten them with an Allen key. Some are centrifugal where as you adjust your center Allen key, that actually goes kind of like this to get closer or further away from your blade. So whichever kind you have, check your manual to see how their adjustment is done. So guys, everything I say from here on in is assuming that you have a blade set in your saw that is properly tracked on your tires or on your wheels and that it is properly tensioned and that the wheels on your bandsaw are coplanar. If any of those things are out, it can affect the uh, drift of your blade. So make sure that those are right. The first thing that we want to do when it comes to setting up these bearings is we're going to set our guide bearings, but we're going to set their position from front to back. Well, pretty much every guide post and every guide assembly here has an adjustment to get it to go from front to back. Mine is a little handle here on the side. Again, you'll have to check your manufacturer. So the first thing that you need to do, guys, look at the play in this. The reason for that is that because my guide post is not locked in place. I can still lower it and raise it however I want, but it's not locked in place, so there's still play on the worm gear. So you need to tighten that up. And once you get it tightened, your play should be gone. I'm shaking the whole saw now. So guys, front to back adjustment. You want to loosen off your entire guide assembly here. And we're going to adjust it front to back so that our bearing is just ever so slightly behind the gullets of our teeth. So we're just going to adjust that here. And as well, see how mine tips up and down like this? From the front, you want to have a look and make sure that you are aligning your blade uh, vertically with that thrust bearing at the back. So once you get it aligned so that your bearings are just behind the gullets, right about there, and you're happy with the position of your thrust bearing, you can tighten it down and lock it in place. And you'll do the same thing with the lower set of bearings. Well, you have your guide bearing set front to back. So how about the distance here from side to side in relationship to the blade? And let me show you one of the common mistakes that is made here and what causes a lot of problems. Guys, pinch these things in, tighten them up, and that's it. They figure they're set up. See how I'm turning this? And it's spinning those guide bearings? That shouldn't be happening. That's just going to overheat your bearings, guys, and cause problems. They're going to overheat. They're going to seize. So you need to have a gap. Now, I know that there are going to be some of you out there that want to know how much of a gap because there are guys out there that are very technical. And this is really not a technical thing. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. If you really want to know the gap, the gap is anywhere from 0.003 to 0.005 inches. For my metric friends, that's 0.06 to 0.13 millimeters. And that is the gap between the edge of your guide bearing and the edge of your blade. It is a very small gap, guys. And in fact, in a lot of cases, uh, you can use paper money. Paper money is roughly, roughly about 0 0.004 inches. So you're right in the ballpark. But if you really want to get technical, you can use a thickness gauge with a 0 0.005 feeler extended on it. And all you want to do is extend the feeler here against your blade, push your bearing up against it, and then tighten it down, and then remove your feeler. 
Now, if I'm running this feeler in here and it's spinning my bearing, it's a little too tight. So you just want to loosen it off just ever so slightly and then you can test again. Now, this is if you want to get super, super technical, guys, if you want to have that exact measurement. For most cases, you can take a piece of paper. I measured this. This is actually 0 0.003. And what you can do is you can wrap this paper around your blade, run it up like this, gently pinch the paper in between your blade and your bearing, remove it, and you should be set there. Now this is set for the minimum. Now you can see as I'm turning the blade, this one here is not spinning at all. This one spins periodically. So you may want to adjust that. Realistically and ideally, you don't want either one of them spinning when this blade is spinning. But of course, with that tiny gap, as the blade spins and it gets a little bit of a tremor sometimes, it's gonna nick and, and hit that uh, that bearing and it's going to cause it to spin. So if it spins a little bit, don't be too concerned. You just don't want it spinning all the time. So there you go, 0.003 to 0 0.005 inches, about the thickness of paper money in between. You can use feelers, or if you really want to get uh, all loosey-goosey and oh, it's good enough, put it in till it touches the blade and then back it off the tiniest little bit and test it to make sure that it's not spinning. And you're chances are you're set pretty good right about there. So repeat the same process now on the lower set of guide bearings. Well, now that you have your guide bearings set front to back and side to side on your blade, that is it for the guide bearings. You are done. It's now time to set the thrust bearing. And as I said earlier, the thrust bearing is the one that pushes into the back of the blade um, to help it from being pushed too far back. Now, when you're sawing on a bandsaw, there is a natural, unavoidable, I stress that, unavoidable, you cannot correct it, um, motion of the blade to push backwards. So you have to compensate for that. So because of that, the gap that's between the guide bearings and your blade is much smaller than between your thrust bearings. Now guys, I have tried to angle the camera to show this, but because my uh, blade guard assembly is all one piece attached right to my guide post. Um, it's impossible for me to get in there and show you. But again, you're going to want a measurement. I know you guys want measurements and that's just fine. So that measurement that you're going to want is 0 0.015 inches. And for my metric friends, that's 0.39 millimeters. Now guys, again, if you want to get super technical, if you're having problems with your bandsaw and you want to get super technical, you can use a thickness gauge. Um, again though, all you really need to do is push it up to your back of your blade until it touches the blade and then back it off a little bit. So you want to set it, as I said, to be about 0 0.015 inches from the back of the blade. I think that's about 1 64th of an inch, guys. Not a very big gap. And just as before, after you get your upper set all in place, you want to do the exact same adjustment to your lower bearing set. Okay, so with all the setup, now it's just time to test. And I've lowered my entire guide assembly and blade guard down to about an inch and a half above my stock uh, just because of the camera. Really, this should be lower to the stock. Your guide bearings uh, and your entire assembly should be about a half an inch above what you're cutting. But for the sake of filming, I can't really do that. So I've drawn a line one quarter of an inch in from the outside edge of this board and I've set my fence so that this blade will hit on that line. So this board is about two feet long. Uh, we're gonna run it through and see if there's any drift that's happening here with this blade. Now I know it's a thicker blade and I know some of you are gonna say it's a thicker blade, but believe you me, blade drift can happen on thick blades as well. And the setup is exactly the same for thinner blades as what it is for thick blades. So let's give this a try.
And as you saw there, guys, this thing cut dead solid all the way along the line. It never deviated, not once, never deviated a single bit. Um, so don't go hating on your saw, go hating on your setup. Well, I've got an old Ryobi here that has um, guide blocks, not guide bearings. So we can set this up in the exact same fashion as what we did um, the larger saw. So the first thing, as I said, 0 0.005, and we're, we'll just use the feeler gauge here just because I've got it out. And we'll just push the guide block in until it's set there between the, um, touching the feeler gauge that is against our blade. And then we'll do the same thing with this side. This is how quick this is, guys. This saw is completely out of whack. I backed off all of the, the guide blocks completely. So there you go, that's up against the thickness gauge at 0 0.005. We're gonna do the same thing with the bottom and then we're gonna set our thrust bearing here. Um, the thrust bearing on this one, like I said, is 0 0.015, a little bit of a different measurement. You need to allow for that blade to be able to push just a little bit to the back. And like I said, if you wanna get technical here, you can use these gauges. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm just doing it here to show you. So we're gonna put that here at 0 0.015. There we go, up against the back of our blade and then tighten it down. I'm just gonna check that. Looks good. And I'm just checking the position front to back and it looks like we could move forward just a touch. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move it forward just a little bit. There we go. And that, of course, messed up my thrust bearing. So I'm gonna redo that one. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom. And we're gonna do the same test experiment cut. Now this saw does not have a fence, unfortunately. So I just have a straight edge clamped here to the table. And that's what we're going to use. All right, so I'm gonna repeat this on the lower half and then I'll show you the cut. And there you go, not one bit of drift. Uh, it's actually a pretty darn clean cut. So guys, like I said, don't hate your saw, hate your setup. And there you have it. Setting up your bandsaw to improve your cuts. Guys, as I said at the beginning of the show, this is not a video on how to align your blade on your wheels. This is not, a video about squaring your blade to your table. This is not a video about tension. This is a video about setting your thrust and your guide bearings or your thrust and your guide blocks to be able to get the optimum cutting performance from your bandsaw. There are far too many people that are trying to cut things with their bandsaw and not getting the blade to run true and straight and they're blaming the saw. Um, in most cases, I'm not going to say in all, but in most cases, it is error in setup. Sometimes it can be things like tension. Sometimes it can be things like having your blade set properly on your wheels. Uh, there's a lot of theories on that. But in a lot of cases, the cause of blade drift when working with a bandsaw 
can be and usually is improper setup. Now guys, there is a possibility that your blade has a twist to it. And if your blade has a twist to it, there is no amount of setup in the world that is going to correct that. Sometimes a blade is just faulty. And I have seen blades be faulty right out of the package. It doesn't have to be an old blade or an abused blade. I've seen it happen with brand new blades. But guys, I'm gonna say something here that if you're looking for a great book for reference on the bandsaw, you cannot go wrong with uh, Mark Duginsky's Bandsaw Handbook. This book has seen a lot of abuse over the years. Um, it is a fantastic book. It was actually handed down to me by my father-in-law uh, when he was finished with it, and I have abused the heck out of it, but it's still in great shape. The book is a little dated, um, but the information that's in it is still pertinent today. I'm going to do my best to see if I can get a link to this book, see if it's still available out there. If not, check your local library and see if they have a copy of it because it is a fantastic reference material uh, and will tell you basically everything you'd ever want to know about setting up and using a bandsaw. Either way, guys, uh, give this a try. If you're having problems with blade drift and getting half decent or good quality cuts with your bandsaw, maybe it's time to look away from blaming the saw and maybe it's time to look into better setup with your guide and your thrust bearings. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope for those of you out there that have been having a few issues that this may help you along and solve those problems for you. It is not the only solution, but it is a very large part of the solution. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a fantastic audience base and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. Guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. I hope you were able to pull something positive away from today's show. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.